seven years ago, a study made headlines for finding that men with older brothers are more likely to be gay. Now that study has resurfaced as researchers take a deeper look into the biological basis of homosexuality. In the original 2006 study, Brock University professor Anthony Bogart found that each older brother raises the odds that a man will be gay by a third. That means that the odds of having a gay son potentially go from a 3% chance with the first to a 6% chance with the fourth. I think it's interesting because when they look at uh, gay men who, ha who were raised in families with older brothers who weren't biologically related to them. They didn't find th the same kind of uh, correlation. So it does seem to, like it does make sense in some ways. What they're going to do now, though, is they're going to try and find out why is this happening. Mm -hmm. When they did the study, they didn't know why. They just thought, this is what's happening. Older brothers mean you're more likely to be gay. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. Now they're trying to find out what is it. Is it hormones in the mother's womb that change every time she has a son? Oh, interesting. Is it, you know, are these epi markers, which are, are these things that turn on and off genes? Like, why okay. is it happening? So they're, they're delving deeper into so it's the more actual... So it's more of a genetic uh, thing that it they're looking into. Because initially, to me, what sounded ridiculous was that it was it was based off of the, like the raising the the, yeah. the personality traits, and I was like, "That's nothing, not where we go." Exactly, nothing for this. to do with that. So if you I have thought like, we were over that, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So if you have five step brothers who are older mm -hmm. than you, it has no play in this. But if you have five older brothers who are actually related to you, it's much likely, more likely that you might be gay. Oh wow! Yeah. So what exactly are the new findings? Here. Well, they, they still, they don't know yet, right? They're in the middle of that research right now. But like I said, they're actually looking to see, is it a hormonal thing? Does, do the hormones in the mother's womb change every time she has a boy? Is it something to do with the way that the genes turn on and off? Um, so they're kind of like in the thick of that research now, and that's what they're going to try and figure out. Mm -hmm. And the study focuses on gay men, but what about right. people? What about trans people or bisexuals? Have there been any studies conducted in regards to people living like that? You know, they're always doing studies like this. There was a study a couple years ago about um, they looked at men versus women, so lesbians versus gay men, and they found that they think that the lesbians get the, the traits from their fathers, whereas uh, gay men get it from their mothers. So it's like this kind of cross... Uh, hereditary thing, mm -hmm. but we still don't know. You know what I mean? And this is the thing. It's like, is it nature? Is it nurture? That's the, the huge argument that goes on all the time. Why are people gay? Is it because of the way they're raised? Is it because of the, something that happens in the womb? And most scientists, I think, actually think that it's a combination of a lot of different factors now. It's not just genetic. It's not just hereditary. It's, it's all these different things. Are you fascinated and interested in the question of why are people gay? Do you think it's a, a beneficial question? I am fascinated. I think it's really interesting. And I think, actually, the, the researcher actually said that the more people who think it's a biological thing are more likely to be more lenient or more supportive of gay people yeah. because they think it's not a disorder. It's not behavioral. It's not, it's not a choice. You, you can't cure it. Yeah. You know? Personally, I think, you know, what if it is a choice? What if I chose to be gay? Would that be a bad thing? I think that if you choose to be gay, then you should still be as welcomed as if, if it wasn't a choice. Like, because yeah. there's still an underlying kind of a weird thing about how it's not a choice. I can't help who I am. Exactly. There's you know this, what I this, mean? It's like it, it, at that point, it becomes an excuse right. to, a, to a degree rather than just accepting. It's, a, it's a, an excuse for maybe like still a bad thing. Like, I can't help that I'm gay. It's just the way I was I was mm -hmm. born this way. You I'm know? so sorry. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. you have to just deal with it. But no, what if, you know, what if... No, I just decided one day I like dick. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> then we should still be like, great, you yeah. get to do that. As long as you're happy and healthy and not hurting anyone, then do whatever you want. That's what I say. So yeah. I don't love the whole argument about like, is are you born this way? Did you, were you made this way? Did you choose to be this way? I think no matter what it is, I think we should just get to be whoever we are, and, mm -hmm. and that's the way it should be. And while you don't like that argument, you would say that you are slightly interested and fascinated Super interested. In, in this. I love these stories whenever they come out, and I think most people are. Like, we mm -hmm. see whenever we put it on the site, people click on this like crazy because people really want to know. What does it mean that, but no one you know, does. No one does studies about sort of spe specific uh, hetero fetishisms or hetero, hetero interests because it's just assumed that, at that point, it's assumed that if you are hetero and maybe you are into bondage or something right. that it would be, is deemed fetishis fetishistic, yeah. excuse me, uh, that, that, is, that is due to nur nurture, exactly. not nature. Exactly, nothing right? inherent in you, exactly. Yeah. And exactly. so, and the same thing, heterosexuality is, is the norm, whereas anything else is abnormal. So we study, we study the abnormal, basically. Exactly. But you're right, it would be interesting to study actually heterosexuality and how that comes about and, and what, you know, what role that plays. But I think that's what we're talking about here is that is this, it's the, the, quote, study of the abnormal, right. which is what it shouldn't, it shouldn't feel like. Exactly. Yeah, which no, is, I think that was my, sort of my gut response to this. It was like, oh, it feels like we're still trying to figure out, like, what makes someone abnormal right. rather than just accepting. Right, and we are.
<laughs> but, but we're getting there, you know what I right. mean? And I still love this stuff. It, it blows my mind when they can say, oh, maybe it's this gene or maybe it's this hormone or, or whatever it is. So, mm -hmm. Well, Noah, it. thank you so much for joining yeah, me and having this conversation. You. It's great to see you, please. Pleasure's all over here. Thanks. And you guys, if you haven't had enough of Caitlin Becker, she's coming up next on HuffPost Live.